Oh, oh, we had to stop. We had to pause it because the intro is I have to start with this video today. Everybody oh, okay. stop the presses. Stop the presses. I had to stop everything because this is going to be our new intro for the rest you, of our lives. Do you want me don't. to op the show? No, Moving no, I really forward? don't. I stopped it on purpose because this is our new intro in perpetuity. Ladies and gentlemen, Lachlan Cross talking oh, about coming on the show today. Here we go. Yesterday, I was let go by Cruz. That's not a joke, not an early April Fool's Day prank. It's real. I promised a um, announcement today. I wonder what it means to be let go on leap year. Anyway, the announcement is I'm going to be on the Dean Blundell podcast on Monday. I have uh, been a regular contributor to his podcast over, well, the last couple of years. He refers to it as my unpaid internship with Cryer Media, and Dean is uh, gracious to, enough to allow me to continue that with him. So I'm going to be on Monday, and I don't want to sit in a negative place, so I kind of want to do one show, talk about it, get it off my chest, and, and, and then move on. So anyway... Crier Media, you can go to their webpage, criermedia.co, uh, for any of the links. But you can also find the Dean Blundell Show podcast on on any <laughs> podcast place, <laughs> Apple, Spotify. I'll put it up on my okay. locker room YouTube page as well. You All right. Thanks, I'm going to take the weekend off. We'll chat next week and thank you for all the messages i've been overwhelmed at about beer four yesterday i had to stop responding uh, but i'll try to get back to everybody all right talk to you soon there we go there we go now we can officially start the program okay there we go there we go Okay, got that out of the way. Welcome to the program, uh, now featuring more of us, as Lachlan Cross has been forced into the digital world like the rest of the free universe. Welcome to the program. My name is Dean. Uh, joining me on this program, as always, and in perpetuity now, my new intern, we call him the man turn, Lachlan Cross, who, as you just heard, uh, is no longer employed as a radio host at 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton. You announced that this weekend. How are you, buddy? How are you doing? First I, I'm actually, I'm good. And I'm surprising the people in my life about how, how good I am. If mm -hmm. we're being honest, mm -hmm. because, well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. That's why I asked. Yeah. I'm, I'm interviewing you today. So this is not a co-host co-host sitch. This is Dean interviewing his friend Lachlan. Cause Lachlan is the latest casualty in the, war against success in traditional media. So uh, I want to know how you're doing. I'm doing okay. I, I am. The The initial shock has worn off. And um, I'll be honest with you. I've known this was coming. And this is not a joke. I met my new boss about three months ago on a Zoom call. Got a vibe. And and I came home and I told my wife, I'm going to get fired. Yeah. And And listen, a lot of people might hear that and go, well, you did it to yourself. Um, and you know, Dean, you know me well enough to know that I was doing everything that I can, that I could to figure out what I needed to do um, to change their mind about that. Mm -hmm. But I was pretty certain that that what, and I was doing it not only for myself, but also for the team. Yeah. For, for well, the locker room. And I think Jimmy, and I think, you know, it's interesting because Locke, uh, everybody is aware, especially in Edmonton, on Edmonton, Alberta, uh, Legacy Morning Show, nine years at Cruise FM. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a little okay? cough, a little sympathy. Cough. Yeah, I'm good. Um, coffee down the wrong hole. So Lachlan on Thursday uh, calls me and he said, and, and listen, this is a big deal. Like these jobs don't come around all the time, especially in major markets like Edmonton. And so Lachlan yeah. is on harmoniously let go you start that morning show nine years ago you take it from its infancy it's a one share to a like an eight nine share your top five men 25 54 adults 25 54 uh you you, you did a great job but it, like in in any situation right you know when the end is coming because yeah. as you 
been out like for the last three months. Anytime there's a change of guard, and it's like this for any radio station, any company, they'll want to bring in their own people. They want to impress everybody with their own panache. So you were that casualty. Let me ask you a couple questions. So you go in on Thursday, you do the show. Did you have an inkling it was coming on Thursday? And what was the experience like? I don't mind it. Yeah, that there was a lot of things and we don't need to get into the details, but there was a lot of things over the last couple of months that gave me an indication that my time was coming to an end to the point where. You know what's interesting is that everybody in in that situation, the one indicator and, and you and I haven't talked about this, but the one indicator that something is wrong and you need to start looking for another gig or the end might be here is silence, isn't it? Nobody wants to talk to you. Yeah, there's well. I had done a decent job of sort of keeping a bubble around the show anyway. Yeah. So um, we um, we were fairly functional without a lot of a, a lot of interaction, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and radio has gotten to a point, Dean. You haven't been doing this for a long time. There is the consolidation and the marginalization of this industry. There's like one boss for four or five radio stations. So there's, you have to learn to live in an environment of a lack of communication because they're too busy. The, the, the upper management, the gatekeepers are way too busy. So for me, um, I, the silence wasn't it. It was a number of other things. And again, we don't need to get into it, but I literally had everything that, that was mine Mm -hmm. out of the building. I had all my, when they asked me, if I needed to to do anything, like to grab my personal effects, I said, no, I've got everything except a box of dildos, which we used for a, for a bar game called Musical Dildos. I don't want to explain it, but something I had you to. Won't, something you won't hear uh, at a firing at like KPMG. No, no, I've got everything. I just need to grab that massive box of dildos in the corner there. We got like six, like pretty substantially sized dildos and I had to go grab that box <laughs> and walk out with that. So, um, cause listen, I'll, I'll, I'll take you through the, uh, and, and let me, let me, t- let me ask you if, you, if you're fine. By the way, musical that. dildos is a fun game. It's a great game. I don't know if you've seen it, but, uh, hopefully we'll bring it back on this program. Um, but, uh, what happens is when you get fired, usually specifically in radio, they'll, they will wait until the second you get off the radio. Mm-hmm. So, your show's done at nine o'clock. They'll come, they'll walk down, meet you at the studio station. They got just stressful. Of, yeah, I got a couple of HR people in the in the in the boardroom, and then you've got like a gopher that comes and gets you at the door, and then they walk you into a boardroom, and all of a sudden everybody's temperature is up to twelve because no one can predict what's coming next. Is was it like that for you? Is that what happened? No, that, I knew. I I knew exactly. No, but did someone come on. and grab you as soon as you walked out of the studio? Yeah, the guy that fired me came and grabbed me. Yeah, <laughs> did he really? <laughs> Was he so, nice about it? Was he good about it at least? Y- yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a difficult situation, right? Yeah. Y- you know what? I, I want to start with a couple of positive things, right? We're going to talk about the state of the industry. Um, so we'll get into it. But but I think people that are in our shoes, before I get into the into the the, the positive start that I wanted to 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 highlight, I think the thing that people need to realize about where we sit is that the gatekeepers are just as scared about where the industry is at right now as everybody that's creating content. Mm. Like it's, it's across the board. Sales is scared. Creative teams are scared. Like everybody involved in this industry right now is scared because of what's been going on the last 20 plus years, right? With the consolidation, with the marginalization, the voice tracks, and we're going to do more with less. And, yeah. You hear all these things and and everyone is concerned. I, I I told you this on the phone. I've heard from a number of people, surprisingly, from from the company that just let me go. Mm-hmm. And half, I'm and I'm not making this up, half at some point in the the back and forth said, you know what, we're just waiting for the shoe to drop, the other shoe to drop. I I don't think I'm gonna be here long. And that's not just my company. That's that's everybody in the business is dealing with that. You can hear it on the airwaves when you're mm-hmm. listening. Mm-hmm. But what I wanted to start with was I am unbelievably proud of what we accomplished in Edmonton 
with the locker room. And I could not have done it without Grant and Jimmy. Man, we were so lucky to get to do what we did for the last, you know. It was, we had such a good show. We had one of the best shows in the country, Dean. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and we had unbelievable chemistry. Um, and we got along. And here's the other thing. And this is something that doesn't happen a lot and is happening less and less in our industry. I got to go into work every day and do the show that I wanted to do, mm. do the show from my perspective. We were nothing but ourselves every day that we cracked a mic. Mm -hmm. And that's rare in this business. Mm -hmm. I got a, a note from a broadcaster who said, this is a really good, and, and, and he's thinking, he's giving me advice that I'll take on to my next job. He says to me, he goes, this is great time for you, Locke, to reinvent yourself, to make yourself more marketable for the next company that grabs you. <laughs> That's how everybody in this business thinks, Dean. We've lost this ability to be ourselves in this environment, in this industry now, because everyone's scared about what that means. Mm -hmm. So we're desperately trying to find some version of ourselves that is marketable for the company. That's the wrong way to think about this. Mm. That's why we're in so much trouble. Mm. Trying to put a square peg in a round hole, uh, to your point. Yeah. And, and you know what? It's funny because everybody has advice for you when you get fired, to your point. Yeah. Yeah, where they'll Which is tell fine. you, oh, here's, I, I don't yeah. mind that Here advice. I'll ignore it. A lot of it. <laughs> if you've ever tried to give Lockwood advice, you know why it's funny. But it's nice that people reached out to you, right? It's nice that yes. everybody's trying to give you advice and trying to tell you what to do. But you know, you're in a situation that a lot of broadcasters are in, and let's trans let's transpose this back to the industry, right? Mm -hmm. Is that you took that personally, even though you shouldn't. Everybody takes getting fired personally. You look at yourself and you go, well, listen. This is failure. It's not. It's systemic. It's a problem with the industry and the economy of radio. And I want to ask you that question. You know, 40, 54 now, yeah. right? With 31, 32 years in the industry. Yeah, I, I started volunteering. Mm -hmm. I did a weekend blues show at the campus radio station, C Jive, in, in Vancouver at SFU on the Hill. Okay. That so was the summer of 1991. 90, 1991. So you got 33 years in, in this industry, right? Well, thanks for doing the math. You're welcome. I'm really good at simple math, really bad at math. That includes anything with an integer. Just letting you know, don't ask me to do integers or ratios. I'm lost. Or the value of X. I'll never be able to find the value of X, C, or Y, ever. But you're 33 years in. You're 54. Do you see because of when you can look back and you can kind of, you know, measure the way the radio is gone, you can see the diminishing return. You can see people who are really good at your job, like you, who was very good at your job, top five in the market, resurrected or really put that radio station on the map over the past nine years. Yes, are, we did. And, and you, I don't I, I don't think it's egotistical of me to no, say that you did it. We built you a brand. The, the locker room brand is a strong brand in this market. Absolutely. Um, but the question I have for you is, I think the question I would ask anybody, stuntman Stu, who got let go in, in that Bill Big Bell purge. I mean, you're one person. That was 4,800 people. 4,800 in people, Dean. Boom. Do you have faith that you want to get back into the industry, or are you done letting other people decide your fate? Because that's not an industry that, as we are talking about, you can have a lot of confidence in, that mm -hmm. you're going to have a long career yeah. if you're going to go and work for any of these broadcasters. And listen. These broadcasters, Harvard, Bell, Rogers, Stingray, all of them are doing the same thing. They're trying to find a template where they can remain somewhat revenue positive, right? So it, this yeah. isn't a personal thing. You can't take this personally. This is what I'm saying. But do you have any faith that there's room for you in that industry anymore? Well, I uh, want first off, the, the first thing I think I'd, I'd like to say is, um, I, I mean, and you always throw the, the, the stoic shit at me, which is fine. God love you. But I think if you get fired and you don't take it personally, there might be, you might be, you might be a lunatic. Um, it's you might, just, you, you might have like a sociopathic disorder. Yes. <laughs> you should take it personally. Absolutely. Well, and here's the thing. And the, the reason why radio people, I was upset fired personally. Well, I'll tell you something. 
It's because you put the best of yourself into your personality. Into I bleed that job. for these. I bleed Absolutely. for these companies, man. When you're an accountant and you're trying to like balance a ledger for KPMG or MNP, or if you're some kind of researcher for Deloitte, you don't take that personally. You're just putting numbers on a sheet of paper. When you're doing radio, television, when you get print, you're putting your passion, yourself, yes. your, your best version of yourself into what you're doing. So, of course, you're going to take it personally in this industry. But okay, now, do you I, see I will... any future for yourself in this industry anymore? Well, listen, I'm either going to do something like this or I'm going to work at Denny's. There's not a lot of paths for old locker. I haven't got a, a lot of skills outside of this. Not a lot of transferable skills. <laughs> uh, can That's I the tell, other problem with people tell everybody radio, about you... myself, like a little bit about myself? Sure, hey, yeah. Like I'm wildly loyal. I'm an introvert. I'm 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 way too honest, and I'm also a little too quick to judge people. So I'll put you in a box, and I've been working on that for a long, long time, and that makes that creates a certain type of person that might not be the easiest to work with in a group setting. Okay. And I was very lucky in my career, if I'm being honest, because I was kind of isolated and I did it to myself. I'm self-aware enough to realize that I am part of the problem. I'm not blaming it, all of the things that happened to me in my career on everybody else. And you know that about me, Dean, I've tried to find ways to figure out what it is that I've been doing and why I'm part of the, you know, the problem and not part of the solution and a lot of the things that have happened to me. Mm. And when I started in Winnipeg at power, Winnipeg was ignored because we were a small market, comparatively speaking to the other markets that the company I worked for was dealing with. Mm. Then I came to the bear and I was wildly ignored because there were so many issues with the morning show at the time. Right. So there were, they were hyper-focused on trying to get that thing was coming to the end of its runway and they just sort of let me do what I, I did. And then here at Cruise, similar situation. We, because of the environment, because of what this company has been going through in the last nine, 10 years, we were largely ignored. Everything we did and accomplished was, was us. We, they threw a couple of bucks at us for, you know, for contesting and, and for marketing, but largely what we built, we did on our own. And, and, and I benefited from that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when you're asking me about whether or not I think I, I, I'll, I'll get back into the industry. I, I don't know. I would, I'm going to be very particular about the next steps, the next decision that I make, mm -hmm. because I'm used to uh, that that environment. Is that fair? Yeah. Oh, totally fair. I mean, li listen. When you're when you leave that industry, specifically if you're good at that job, you know, and you watch the economy around that job kind of crumble, and and like you say, you're trying to put a bubble over the show, not pay attention to the economy of radio, the diminishing return, the anxiety. We treated our own show industry, like our own radio station, as you should, right? Like everybody else did and you should do that you shouldn't be doing a job for your program director you shouldn't be doing a job for your boss you should be doing a, the very best job you can do to stay employed which for the you listeners did. right which you did which is why you had a very highly rated very successful morning show really the only good rock and roll radio show left in this country if you ask me so when you look at that and you, you think to yourself because this is how i look at it and that's why i'm asking this question is i look at the preventative nature of that business now you know, you said you got to do a show that was your show, that was you, intensely you, intensely the people on the show. The way that radio is gone is now it is becoming a, a liner driven business, meaning you have to be able to give the information the radio station wants you to be able to give and not step outside that. The days of people co-opting a personality saying, we want you to be the very best version of yourself. We want you to do that here for us. We'll collect all the ratings and the money. And you just go do a great job. Those days are over. That's the culture that you're talking about that was a lot of fun. And if you can repeat that environment somewhere else, God bless you. I think you might be able to do it in the United States. But I truly believe this to be true. And this is why I asked you the question. Is that in Canada, they're not looking for people who are really good at radio. They're looking for placeholders. They're looking for someone to be able to kind of, mm, they can trust to be able to do a decent job, 
someone that will just deliver the things that the radio station and the company that owns a radio station wants you to do, whether it be cell phone liners or cable, you know, to get more shock, whatever the deal is. They want you to do those things. So they've realized that radio is what it is, which is a diminishing asset. So when you are in the business, as you were up until Thursday, and you can see all that around you and you've got an opportunity to make an exit and do your own thing. Should someone else call you and say, hey, listen, put your faith in us. We're going to be fine. Does that give you pause at this point of your career at 54? Pause. Well, go, I've already I had. I don't know if I'm going to put my. I've already like, had a couple of job offers. Yeah, I, I know. Like, I, that's I, why I wanted, I'm asking. I, I don't know. I got to think about it. I, I really do. And and I'm going to take some time. Um, before I make a, a decision, there, but, listen, the industry itself is sick. It's not the companies; it's the it's the people in that well, let's, industry. Let's let's dig saying, into that. Let's okay, dig let's into go. that a little bit because I think that's worth the conversation. And I've had lots of time over the last couple of years to actually digest that. Um, okay, first off, there are exceptions to the rule. I don't think the entire industry is what we just said it was. I, I want to say that out loud, and I also support. Think in this it country, is, but but I also think there are people out there that give a crap about this business, and and they actually go into work every day to try to actually put it on a decent show. They're not going into work every day to just read liners. But I will say this: you you got to be, it, man. If you're doing a market, if you're doing six markets, you're doing voice tracks. I don't know how you get excited about that. I don't know how you find a way to engage an audience if that's your gig every day. So mm. the, the industry is in trouble for a variety of reasons. Okay. So, and, and again, we talked about the consolidation, the marginalization, the voice tracks, the program directors doing four radio stations, getting rid of leadership. So they've done it to themselves, right? In an attempt, because the big companies that bought up all these smaller like companies and became these bohemists were doing it for assets. So, and they were doing it to milk as much money as they possibly could out of it. Yeah, profit and, take for free yeah, advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So over that time, what ended up happening is is ratings and revenue kept going down. Now, that wasn't the sole reason for it. The industry has also been segmented. There's a lot more things for ears and eyeballs to to gravitate towards. So the money content, is also right? like shit like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the money has also been spread out. And AdSense, then since meta, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Add insult to injury, injury. They're also firing a lot of these content creators that are pulling eyes and ears away from traditional radio, and and I think traditional radio and traditional media as a whole has done a lot of damage to its reputation. So you got people now that are just listeners, just consumers seeking out alternatives. So we're in this really bad cycle. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the business, the companies are all following this major bit, the, like the major company template of slash and burn. Yeah. So cut, everyone's cut the profitability, doing it right? The, the goal is to cut the profitability, get those margins up for something. Yeah. And that for a sale is, or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. And so you're the, the people that you have left working in the business are going into work scared every day. And, and it's not easy when, and listen, I've been doing it for the last three months. It's not easy to go into work every day and try to create content when you know that you know, there's a chance you're going to get fired. So the, but the, the, the thing that drives me crazy is I think there's still a lot of people left in the business that know what they need to do to save it. And it's between the records and it's creating an environment where the jocks, your content creators, the people that work in the building that are trying Free to be confident to create. Yeah. Yes. And giving something for the sales people to actually sell. Mm -hmm. Right. And giving them something to get excited about except the problem with that is that's the harder path. If you're at the fork in the road, the easier thing is slash and burn, cut the big salaries, hope that you make some semblance of profit for whatever reason. The harder path is to create an industry, a radio station, whatever, where everyone is excited about coming into work today. Mm -hmm. And then the audience can hear it. Like, here's the other thing. This is not just happening to people that talk on these things. It's happening to sales departments, right? They're slashing. and So you're losing these relationships. 
And that's what this thing, this, this job, this industry is all about relationships. And if you have, if you kill those relationships, you're going to lose those dollars because a lot of times those dollars are tied to those damn relationships, Dean. And the people that get the ratings that hold those relationships, you know, it's yeah. fascinating that this business does, doesn't consider the collateral damage of their decision-making. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those. I think they do. I, I, I just I, think well, it's they, the I easy can't, way I can't, out. But I, oh, totally. It's like, hey, listen, are we going to do a great job of finding great talent? Are we going to do a great job of reinventing the content, selling the content? Are we going to do a great job of finding different buckets of revenue to be able to match traditional with digital? Those aren't the conversations that they have, right, in, in traditional media. The, the conversations they have are, Ooh, how many people can we get rid of and use AI for number one? Now, number two, it's, Ooh, how can we be as lean as humanly possible to get rid of these dead technology assets? That's what well, the other thing to do is in that industry. Right. And to that point is, and I, we do work, we digitize traditional media for sale. We do programmatic direct ads. We do all the stuff that radio asks the digital world for. So we do that for people. And in these conversations I have with these people, they all have said the same thing. It's like they are literally big, big radio companies in Canada right now. And I talk to guys that are facilitating these deals. They're trying to make radio stations and those media outlets as lean as humanly possible ahead of getting rid of those assets because they've squeezed all the profit out of them and they know the technology is gone now. Like it, they, they don't care to do that work that you point out of. Wow, how can we use this? How can we give a different purpose so that we can use it as a free megaphone or funnel for business into our ecosystem? They just don't do that, to your point. Right? Well, I think the other issue, too, is we're, we're dealing with a situation where these companies, you got guys that are left in them that still remember how much money they used to make. Mm -hmm. So now they're not willing to settle on the money that they're making now. It mm -hmm. just isn't good enough. So we need to make changes to get the profits up. Okay. And, and so that's a problem. The other problem is, and I think you nailed it, is that a lot of these gatekeepers are having conversations amongst themselves about the longevity of radio, terrestrial radio as a whole. Yeah. They've lost faith in it. So if they've lost faith in it, are they going to do the hard work that it might take to revitalize it? And I don't think it's, but I don't think it's ever going to, I don't think it has the capacity. So if you ask me, that's where you're wrong. I, I could in be, my listen, opinion, I, I think be. if you actually, if it g give think, me one radio RV. station, give me one radio station and, and let me do what I want with it. And don't worry about profits. Just give me three years. Those, those words, those words, I can make you a just ton of money. Those those words you just uttered will will, will never endear you to a it company might. to say here's a radio station lock. Don't worry about money. That's the only thing they're worried that's about. That's the problem. Yeah. We worry yeah. about money, and and well, that's, that's business. what makes the world go around. Totally, dude. Like yeah. anytime, it, it, there's a season for everything. Unfortunately, God bless Marconi. Season for radio's done. Season for TV's done. Season for prints done. It doesn't mean they don't have a cool, cute niche in the world of communication and entertainment. That's not what I'm saying, Yeah, but it's done, man. Like they're they, dude, they fired you on Thursday and you're very, very, very successful. Listen, you don't fire successful people to make, they get you paid. You, you keep incentivizing them and you keep them going and you build a bubble around them so they can continue to make money for you. Right. They didn't do that, but I was just one. I know. You're one, one one cog in the wheel, stuntman Stu, Ottawa, yeah. same thing. Successful, great ratings. You make too much money, and this business, we want to send a message. We're done with all the bullshit. We're done with all the, and I, and I mean, dude, let me liken it to something else, right? Someone asked me about Cryer Media. They're like, you know, what's the workload like? I'm like, it's crazy. You know that it's insane. You got people. You've got algorithms. You've got social media. You've got monetization. You've got content. You've got micro. You got all this. You got audio. You've got programmatic direct. You got all these things. You got to keep on. And then you got to deal with weird personalities and stuff. And then we've got a couple of other businesses on the side that require none of those things. And I'm like, you know, what do I? <laughs> <laughs> like, where do I spend my time? 
<laughs> well, you spend your time on the things that are more profitable that cause you fewer headaches. Right now, radio is a massive a headache gr- for it. It's a great analogy. It well, really that is. radio yeah. is a massive headache for anybody that owns them. Like, take Harvard, and the, for and example. And the people that are left are in charge of so much. It's yeah. overwhelming. Totally, dude. Right? Yeah. So they've taxed all these people with 40 jobs for one person because the economy of radio stinks. People yeah. that owned it are like, we got to get out of the business. They're not bad people. Like Bell's a bad company. Rogers is a bad company. They, you know, I don't know about that. I think they, I, they are. They're uh, bad companies. Well, Rogers is less of a bad company than Bell. Bell is a <laughs> fucking terrible company that treats people like absolute <laughs> shit. And then they put up these environmental commercials. Is like, we're Bell. We like electric cars. They're like, yeah, you better put that up because you can't do anything else. And you fire people after yeah. taking money from the government to pay them, you dicks so bottom line is is that you know you got variations in these companies but what you're suffering through is what everybody's suffering through in that industry which is on-demand content man they they haven't decided to be part of the game they've decided to fight against it the wave went right over top of them took them all out to sea and they're all going it's nice in here no it's not it's terrible in there it's a terrible thing to do and so to your point and that's why i asked you if you do it again it's not a healthy industry and I don't think yeah. people should be getting involved in it if you want to have a long career where your work, like the excellence of your work, and you were excellent. You still are one of the best radio guys in this country. And well, I mean I, that from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate Is, that. But any station would be lucky to have a guy with your panache, someone that can drive audience, someone that can get ratings, someone that can connect with a community like you do. That was the game back then. It's no longer the game. And that should tell you everything you need to know about the people that own these assets that don't want anything to do with them being successful anymore. Because it's just too much work, dude. Yeah. And it's sad. It is it's sad. totally sad. But in your case, Harvard is owned by a very, very wealthy family who look at the return on the broadcasting side and go, listen, for fun and influence, we'll keep a couple of these things. It makes no sense to stay in the radio game if you own bricks and mortar and licenses and you got to pay fees and the return continues to go down by 10 to 15 percent every year. And you're watching digital go up all these radio companies and media. They're all doing the same thing. They're they're all doing the same thing. They're all looking at 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 the at the revenue coming in and there's and they're making tough decisions. And, And you're right. At the top of this discussion, you said you can't take it personally, Locke, Um, even though it's hard not to. And that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to separate my own feelings from this and have a look at it from where the, the business is right now. And I, I do have some advice from people for, for people just based on what I've gone through in my career. I I got lucky. I got a call from this guy, Dean Blundell, who wanted me like it's been over two years now, Dean. We've been we've been uh, doing the podcast mm-hmm. and you wanted me to jump on and um, and. And, and I did, and we had instant chemistry, and I have learned so much more about this industry, and, and I've become a better broadcaster because of my relationship with you and doing this podcast. We're going to do it on a more regular basis, and you've agreed to do that because you realize that I will lose my mind if I'm not doing something, so I appreciate that. I might be a bit manic, um, and I... I think that's the one piece of advice that I can give everybody is, is you have to explore this other medium, the the other alternatives. And I listen, if you're really passionate about cooking or star Wars or whatever it is, I I, I don't care. Find a way to create content and get it out there. Cause this is something too, that doesn't get talked about a lot. The gatekeepers, the ones that are making these decisions, these tough decisions for these radio companies to try to squeeze any amount of profit out of these out of these radio stations, they're aware of something and they might not vocalize it, but the audience is right there. It's it's right there. It's at your fingertips. Yeah. Brands like the Locker Room and Lachlan Cross and Dean Blundell don't need the gatekeepers anymore to reach an audience. Mm -mm. And that's also adding to the issues of traditional media, right? Yeah, I left that part out. But to your point, and that is a great, great point. And it's wrapped up in advice, right? Which is get busy creating your own brand. Listen, Lachlan's 100% correct, everybody. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm living proof of it, so is he. 
is that you don't need an intermediary of an employer to be able to communicate with people, build your brand, or more importantly, do the content that you're super passionate about, yeah. right? We have a rule at Cryer Media, and that rule is we don't get in the way of your shit. I don't want to work with people because I want to tell them what to do so we can have a bunch of me. I want to work with people who are way better at their stuff than I would be. Bring and your I want passion to, to us. Stay away from that. Yeah. I want to stay away from your passion. I want to allow you to work. I want to allow you to breathe. I want you to go and make money. We want you to go and have 12 jobs. We want you to have 15 clients. We want to help you make that money because that's good for us, right? Radio stations, media companies, they don't want what's good for you. They want what's good for their shareholders so they can pay them dividends. So you're a number on a sheet, right? Here at Cryer Media, Lachlan's a human being who's got a ton of road in front of him and he wants to do great content and he wants to feel purpose and he wants to have a great experience doing what he's passionate about that he's one of the best in the country doing. I got lots of space for guys like that. Everybody should, right? Everybody should, mm -hmm. but they don't because they're not interested in the people. And I cannot stress that enough. We're in the people business, man. That's the only way to be successful is to grab people like this and go, come with me. We found solutions. You can give us solutions. Let's match up our skills and our effort and our desire to go out and fuel our success together. Yeah. That is this space. The other space is fuck you. Fuck that. Fuck this. I don't care about that. Uh, you're not important to the process. This is a dead industry. We want real money. We're not interested in giving you a paycheck. What we're really interested in is paying dividends and making sure that the people that own this company get a big fat million dollar bonus each for Christmas Again, I, I still think there are people out there that get how to fix it. They're just maybe not brave enough to stick their hand up and go, there hey, might I be. got an idea. I, haven't met them I yet. still think there are people left in the industry that know that that what it what's happening between the records is going to save the business. Good content. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, dude, I'm really proud of you. You had a great run. You I had did. a great, I did. great and I'm not, run. I'm not unhappy about my situation. I'm I'm not. I, I, I swear. Um, getting fired is not easy, but dealing with what I was dealing with the last fired? three months I think was you were just downsized. That was downsized. Were... Let go. Shit can. Yeah. I think shit can actually is the, is the best way of describing what happened to me. Dude, the tweet you put out as soon as you pull out, uh, my significant other who is an executive sends, sends me a note and she's like, that's an interesting way to uh, thank your employer for the years of employment and do yourself to an audience. I'm like, it's Lachlan Cross. He's never going to change. Your tweet, cruise shit canned me today. I plan on getting drunk tonight, sleeping in. Watch for an announcement. Well, wait, hold on. Here's the thing. I, uh, like, listen, I appreciate the opportunity that I had over the last nine years. Yeah, totally. And, and like you said, they paid me well. Yes. And and I, I got a chance a to build a brand. Working relationship. You offered they, a service, they, they paid go. you for the service, and then they said we don't want you doing the they service. Let me here go. Totally. You're not gonna see me write a seven page Facebook forty four thread tweet about how okay. grateful I am for all the people I worked with. I'm I'm pissed off. And and you know what? <clears throat> it's okay to be angry. That is a natural sure. reaction to uh -huh. this. They decided that they're better off without me, right? And yeah. so I'm gonna move on. They're gonna move on, and that's and, and that is that is okay. And I'm not gonna reinvent myself. I, I, I kind of like who I am, and I'm comfortable with the things that I've done and 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 the career that I've had. Man, you've said it to me almost daily when I was started working with you. You said, "I can't believe you're still doing this." Seriously, I know, but well, only because like 54 year old guys don't do morning shows at, at the level that you did them. And you're not like, and how, what you're allowed to do, like it was two, three years ago. I'm like, oh, there's a radio station in Edmonton that's still doing a dwarf tossing event. That's fast. We did never. No, we never did that. Please. You you're going to get me. <laughs> I don't need those letters again. <laughs> Dude, it's over. All the past is owned by death. You've got nothing to answer for. You were I do worry about game. Grant and Jimmy. That those are the two people that I left behind that I'm 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 very concerned about. And I and I I hate to say that, but I hope they can pull it off. Well, if I know Grant and Jimmy, 
They're survivors. If I know you, you're a survivor. Um, listen, there's a time and a season for everything. You, nothing, not any decision anybody can make for your life can take away the success that you had, the human being that you are, the father that you are, the friend that you are. That's the important stuff. Can you throw a husband in there just Hus- for my wife's sake? Nope. Because I've met your wife. She does all the work. She's she's the person that holds that whole thing together, dude. Thank um, God for my wife right now. I know. No kidding. She's yeah. got a good gig. She's fucking terra firma. She's awesome. This, and this is, again, you know, in these moments, and I want to encourage everybody to think like this. This is some stoicism. I'm going to throw it at you. You're going to like it. You're going to take it. No, You're it's gonna annoying. Eat it. But I, it is not annoying. You need to do it. In I times know. like this, you get a real grateful appreciation for your wife. For the people that love you, for your well, friends. and the people around you, right? That support people, you. Yeah, and that's the indicator of the person you are, not some dude coming to grab you when you're off your show who has the collective radio experience of a seven year old, not some guy that says you don't work into his plans who has not been in radio his for the last twenty years and used to be a club DJ, and it doesn't matter who that person is, where that person is, why that person is. It's not a guy at Bell who decides that Lisa LaFlam, her hair was too gray. I and liked that not, hair. I love like, it. I, I thought, thought it was she hot. Looked, I totally. thought she looked awesome. It's not someone who comes up to you and says, hey, listen, I've got a bright idea and you're not in my bright idea. You, you're, you're not in control of other people's bright ideas and their own excellence in their own mind and how they justify their jobs to other people. But it will affect you every time you put your future in somebody else's hands. So to Lachlan's point, Get super, 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 super busy doing something for you, by you, that you can present to people and not give a shit about anything else. Nothing else matters other than the gift that you give yourself to give other people when it comes to the content that you do, right? You don't want anybody in between you and your content. Not a radio company, not a TV company, not a print company, not an agency. You want to be able to give your agency to yourself all the time. The second you work for somebody else, you give them your agency. You start working to please them. Please your audience, advocate on the side of your audience, create Mm -hmm. a community and continue to serve that community with what you're passionate about. To Lachlan's point, he's in yoga. I've been trying to get him to do a yoga series for a long time. He's not a radio guy. He's the best version of himself today. And everybody else should be thinking like that, too. That's what I wanted to say. And I'm glad I got the box of dildos out of there. Yeah. It's tough to replace, right? And when you go buy six dildos like, in one in one sh- one sitting, people will ask questions. It's like five, six hundred bucks. They're a hundred bucks for a dildo. I don't really want to talk about why I know so much about how much dildos cost. Well, because you played musical dildos and you bought a lot of dildos for musical dildos on your radio show. That's why. You yeah, they're them. like 70, 80, 90 bucks. Like for a dildo ones. Yeah. For the bigger ones. The ones with veins are more expensive. And then we had to buy lube, right? Because we did, we wanted them to be slippery when people went to grab for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All those were the days, huh? Musical dildos and dwarf tossing game over. I listen. We did. We never tossed Jimmy. You a hundred percent did, <laughs> dude. There's gonna be a time. I will not admit to that. Radio stories are the best. <laughs> like back when you did. Oh, I remember we did this. And you're like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that. There are and if we in my did, radio- he agreed to it, and we put mattresses down. It does. <laughs> People are going to miss the locker room. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> oh, and thank you, thank you for all of the messages that we got. Like I got, I've been bombarded with messages. So know, okay, but- and can we do one more thing? Let's yeah. wrap up here. Please. This has been, I appreciate this. I don't think that this is something that I want to do again. Like let's, let's move on. We're not talking about it anymore. Well, you'll bring it up that I've been fired. Like probably every, just for like three months. It's like, I've got a rule three months. Let me write that. The best way to help someone get fired. Like who just got fired through the firing is to continue to remind them that they're a free agent. They can do whatever they want, but in a way where it reminds them of getting fired. Yeah. So, Hey, you remember when you got fired? Yeah. (laughs) I, I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll that. do that for three months. All right, I'll start the clock. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks last, for this. Yeah, I buddy. appreciate always. Uh, you have a great day. By the way, I've only been fired twice, really once, because the second twice one was mutual. You've been fired twice. So yeah, I've been fired once. You've been fired twice.
And the first time I got fired, I hung on to it and was bitter for about a year until my wife sat me down and said, you need to shake it off. You're doing better now. Why are you still bringing this up every Did day? You play the Taylor so Swift song? That's why. Shake it off? No, no. I don't. Please don't. I I want to be better. You talked about the better version of myself. I am not going to do that to myself this time around. And and I'm going to I'm going to do my best to move on. It's just a job. Thank you. There's millions Is of that stoicism. Yeah. Basically. Oh, yeah, good. I basically okay. change your life and you don't even know it. Look at Lachlan Marcus Aurelius is on your asses. <laughs> Lachlan Cross, you can find him on Twitter. Get a hold of him. Uh, if you are someone who appreciated what he did at the locker room, at Lachlan Cross on Twitter, you can find him on Facebook as well. Uh, and you can find him here at Cryer You Media. want me to come to your bar or your event and play musical dildos? Let me know. Yeah, he's good. He's good like that. Two fifty a night, cash, all cash, or e-transfer. And it doesn't matter. Let's just help feed Lachlan and save Lachlan. By the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can also get uh, one of these slick shirts. He put this on Twitter last Such night. Locker room merch. Stupid idea. Yeah. We sold like five as soon as they went. Yeah, here you go. Watch it. I'm like, the guy that runs my merch page thought this would be funny. It's up. It's a thing. I'll put the link below. I'm like, no one's buying that. He's like, you'll be surprised. Oh, yeah. And then calls me and goes, we sold five, you idiot. <laughs> Go get your Save Lachlan Cross shirt. Give him some beer money. Uh, support this man. Let's support <laughs> each other as life continues to change, especially when life changes. It has nothing to do with you. Uh, great job, dude. Great career. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Um, really, 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 really think about how proud you are of the career you've had. Uh, and then know I, that. This I, I don't need to think about it. Good. I, I am, man. Good, I, I am wildly proud of it. Good. Wildly. Good. Yeah. Talk to you tomorrow. With Alex. Alex Day Rebekov joins us tomorrow live from Ukraine. All right, buddy. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Lachlan Cross. Uh, there you go. There's an example of a guy who has continued to figure out life, right? No one's exempt from these things. No one's exempt from getting fired. Everybody loses a job. Sometimes you go bankrupt. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're wildly successful. But when someone else makes a decision, that affects your life to that extent. You have to think back to when you give them agency, when you decide you want to work for somebody and listen, everybody works for somebody. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm really not, but we live in a time where people can do their own thing for themselves. And we live at a time when people tell you that, ah, you grow up, you work for somebody else. Hopefully you get a good pension. Hopefully you make it to 65. Life is so short. I'm 51. I turned 51 this year. 51. 20s, you think you're going to live forever. 30s, you're like, everything that happened to me when I was zero to 18 is catching up with me. 40s, you're like, like a collection of your 20s and 30s and super confused. 50s is where you calm down. It is. And that's where all the things that you've done in your life bring you to this perspective of what you can control and what you can't. And if you give your life, your agency to somebody else that can control you, you shouldn't be surprised when they do. You shouldn't. And I get it. It's easy for me to say that. But there were seven years there that I battled to not have to do that with other people. I'm only in this position because I bet on myself, and I would encourage everybody to do that. Everybody. You see people that are successful. You see people that do these things that you're like, why are they so successful? I don't understand it. It's because they, they did the work. No one's exempt from doing work. Nobody. Not you, not me, not anybody. It doesn't matter. 33 years in radio like Lachlan, 15 for me. You can be as incredibly successful as you want. You're not exempt from doing the work of getting into a new career or doing something else. So don't take your ego with you. Bet on you. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you being part of the show. Don't forget everything we do is at Cryer Media. Go to Cryer.co for more details. You can get us at YouTube as well. Cryer Media on YouTube or Dean Blundell Show on YouTube is always brought to you by our friends and yours at factcheck.io, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. This is fact-checking software, disinformation killers. You've got scientists, journalists, all kinds of people that have come together to say, all right, if they can sew a face that belongs to someone else onto someone else's head, you can probably figure out a way to track this information. And they've done it socially. They've done it uh, you know, when it comes to the World Wide Web. They have figured out how to 
operate in that world of sentiment and intention. Uh, not only do you get to figure out whether or not the sources that you're reading are real, they will also tell you where they came from, who wrote them, and how much money was spent on them. They'll tell you whether or not they were bots and trolls that gave it gas. They'll tell you whether it's organic or inorganic, and then they'll offer you other solutions so that you can actually be informed, and then you can turn around and you can share that information with the world so you can look super smart. Go to factcheck.io if you would like to join their beta testing team. You can do that now, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io, beta test their program, become part of their beta testing team. And you yourself could be a verified fact checker. Get in before everybody else does. Get real information so that you can share it with other people, too. Go to factcheck.io for more details. Factcheck.io, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. Do you believe? Also brought to you by Cantork, makers of rugged, hardworking torque wrenches, the best in the business. Cantork is every solution under one roof. You want to be a distributor of their world-changing products, you can do it. What is Cantork? They make torque wrenches, bolting solutions for people that can't find them, heavy machinery, nuclear, railroad, forestry. Doesn't matter what they do. They have unparalleled expertise, and they're a one-stop shop, 20 years of experience for any bolting solution. Cantork's top-of-the-line torque and tension tools, flange maintenance systems, impact sockets. You can rely on the highest quality products. They are brought in for heavy industry around the world, Dubai. UAE, the United States, Canada, dudes in Australia. He builds torque wrenches for tunnel boring machines that nobody else can make. He's the best in the world and the best in the business. Go to Colin at Cantork.com. Check out his new website, services, and products. On his brand new website today, again, Cantork.com. Also brought to you by Muse on the Mic, the podcast. The Patreon version is greasy. You'll love it. Emily and Riley are the two hosts and owners of Muse Massage Spa. Go to musemassagespa.com for more details. 1290 Finch Avenue West, Unit 13, Toronto men, Toronto women. If you're looking to play and you're looking for a safe experience and if you're looking to uh, go and have a lovely evening, this is the best body rub parlor on the planet. 1290 Finch Avenue West, $20 off, 45 sessions. Now, here's the catch. They've also got a podcast because they like to entertain and educate their sexologists and advocates muse on the mic go and download it subscribe on youtube subscribe on patreon and learn a thing or two about relationships about playing about sexual activity in a safe environment about how to explore fantasies and kink and how to do it in a safe environment they're advocates and they're yours go and download their podcast today muse on the mic anywhere you get your fine podcasts including youtube crier media and of course patreon and we're brought to you by Gitch, engineered for any level of performance as well as everyday life. Gitch underwear for men, boxer briefs, pouch in the front, top prospects. They come in blue, they come in purple, they come in red, they come in orange, and of course, camo black. I like to call black underwear camo, just in case. Anyway, Gitch3 is your promo code. Buy three, get one free. Again, Gitch3 at checkout, edsfineimports.com. Underwear made for any level of performance in everyday life. You can walk, run, or sprint through your day. Very soft, super soft, barely there fabric, moisture wicking, premium underwear designed with your movement in mind, and, of course, that pouch in the front made for Canadians by Canadians. So the pouch is a little bigger. Fellas, you're welcome. It's like a push-up bra for your things. Go to Ed's Fine Imports today. Gitch3 is your promo code. He's got four packs and singles. When you order three or more, you'll get the fourth for free and 15% off. When you give them your email address, 15% off your entire purchase, receive exclusive access to arrivals, promotions, contest invites, and more. Again, Ed's Fine Imports, Gitch3, your promo code, get some underwear. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you being here. <clears throat> See you tomorrow with Alex from Ukraine. Bye-bye.